All right, guys. I uh, I need some therapy. I've been working some pretty hard jobs around here. The uh, I've had a couple of jobs where it ended up costing me more than I thought the customer was going to pay, and I really don't like telling somebody that it's going to be $150 more than what their original not quote, but you know, I usually say it's going to be this. If it's not this, I'll call you. <laughs> and I've had a couple that have been more, and I don't like that. But you know, they're all willing because they know that uh, they can't they can't get this kind of a deal per hour or anywhere else around. So uh, now we're going to start with some therapy for me. This is the pretty much the same lawnmower I pushed around my yard for 27 years until I got my new Honda four years ago or more. It's a three and a half horse Tecumseh and I don't know if it has a if it has a spark I don't know anything. So we're going to just first of all you're going to do this with me <clears throat> sorry down on one knee. I'm not asking it to marry me that's expensive So all we want to do is see a little bit of oil in here. Yes, it has oil. Not a lot, but enough to get us through the testing purposes. Just like that. So we got oil. I don't think it's going to have any fuel. Gosh, it's got a little bit of fuel, but can you imagine how bad it is? But that's not our issue right now. We want to make, see if this thing will even fire. Air filter. I think I've, you might have seen me take this out of the truck. Okay, it's not actually that bad. That's an encouraging sign. So I'm going to just shove that back in there. While you guys watch. And I'm just going to blow a few feathers off this bad boy. I know, I, I should do it out on the... Apron. Yes, I'm going to go do that out on the apron. Walk this way. So this little mower is kind of in trouble. I this, The wheels are set at mid-range, right? Right there. But they're, it's as low as it can go. So I'm really, I'm just trying to save the engine on this little job. Let's put this back in. There, now we can... We can blow away till our heart's content. Donny Boy 73 calls this air washing. It's a good description, isn't it? He is still the go-to guy on challenges. So I'm glad I did that outside. Let's plug in the old choo-choo train here. Now the air tank must, there we go, the air tank must have been low. So I'm just going to squirt some gasoline down into the intake manifold. Filter in. That's cheating. To come see you can do that. Let's just see if it fires. Nothing, huh? Okay. We might have to put it up on the operating table. My arms aren't long enough to see if it has a, has a spark. Oh, let's pull the plug out. Maybe there's something weird oddball with that. We'll see if we have any kind of a spark at all. Lately I've been having a harder time seeing the spark. You might feel it. I don't even have a spark. Jiggered. I'm just gonna put my little spark indicator on there. Oh, 
no, no spot. So I should be able to feel that then. Straight right to my hand. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, time to start operating. That's probably why it's not firing. <laughs> you gotta light the fuel. Could even be, well, it could be a lot of things, right? Yeah, this, I think this deck has had it. It's got a hole right here. Now I'm gonna see if it has any compression. Oh yeah. You bet. So let's get this gas tank off of here. Let's have a look at the fuel just for fun. I bet you it's three or four years old or more. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at that, eh? Modern fuel is clear. Oh, and it's half water, too. And I'm even going to use some of the original fuel to swish it out. As long as you don't pour the water and the dirt back down. Blade of grass, imagine that. So no crud, no crud, no crud, no crud, no crud, no crud, no crud. Out there. That'll help. Yeah. Just give it a shot here. Something clean right off the bat, eh? So it's got no spark. So I guess the next thing is to get that shroud off of there, guys. Drop my watch. Now for you young guys, I say that and you go, what does he talk about? It's just, I used to work in an environment where you lifted heavy things a lot. I don't know why I messed up now, but uh, you drop, you know, you drop a 14-inch crescent wrench on the ground, and you'd say, "Oh, I just dropped my watch," just because that watch would never sound like that, right? Five sixteenths. That should be it right there. And my favorite of all favorite tools that I didn't buy. So the thing that amazes me about this mower is that like the wheels are in such good shape but the but the deck is rusting through in a couple of places, right? Okay, so now I think I need uh looks like three eighths. Yes sir, Bob. I don't know, the extension's too long. But it worked. So the beautiful thing about Tecumseh is this should just lift off. With a, I might have to loosen the cobbler at all. My friends. And get this off of here. I gotta go shorter. Go! Oh, that's tightening. 
What are the risks of these things? And then this should just pull off. Oh. Might be a movie producer. Sorry, Everett. No movie producer. I stole that one from you, buddy. But we got a problem with the lens. Wait, don't run. Ooh. Can you see now? No. Might just be glare from this thing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. My camera is filthy. So now we have the cover off. This looks suspect, eh? It almost looks like it might be mouse infested. And uh, if this cable is touching ground, this is the cable that turns off the coil when the uh, when this stop cable up here is activated like it like it is now right uh, but anyway if, if you unplug this you should get a spark but first I'm going to blow the feathers off the inside of this and you don't have to watch that you've seen it done I'm going to just put the spark plug back in here for minor protection now let's go blow her up and I'll be right back guys so if you fix small engines on a regular basis even though you like I live in the city you still have to keep the minimal amount of stuff that's important, like coils, etc., etc. Just looking for a couple of things. I'm always looking, right? Okay, so let's get that other one off of there and see what we got. Okay. So it's these are mostly Tecumseh coils. Right there. The one I took off is right here. Well, I don't know if it matters. I guess we've got to pick one with the same length of, of uh, lead. And now we're going to stick this on the mower. And here we go. Plug the kill switch back in because we know that it's working. And I'll show you. I guess I should show you that, right? Because you guys might not have seen this. Okay. So here's the coil. Right here is the kill switch that goes up to the bar that you hold down to keep it running. As soon as you let go of that bar, bang, it grounds it and kills the coil from running. We're going to stick these two screws in here. And then we're going to tighten this up with our business card. So just hang on. Got our business card and our quarter turn, quarter inch. I'm holding, don't laugh, I'm holding the camera with my stomach. There. We'll get that centered. Oh, this is where I take my metal, my uh, used metal. Get 
bolts are a bit stiff, but there could be crud in those those holes. Those holes are what they call blind holes, right? There's no there's no bottom. Good. That's all there is to it. We just rotate this out. And we'll see if we have a spark now. Well, let's see if we can see a spark and not get zapped. Let's have this one do hummer without the battery. Yes, I got a spark. Now, I don't know if you guys can see it because it's pretty bright out here. But I'll bring you in. I'll hold you with my stomach. That way you're safe. You see it? All right. So now we just have to see if the motor's going to run. Might clean that spark plug. Oh yeah, we're focused out. I'm just gonna clean that spark plug and we'll get it back in the machine. Alright, that spark plug looks pretty good. And I'm guessing on the on the uh, gap, but it's not the electrode's not quite square, so there. Now I'll just grab a gapper. I know my 30 is the second one in, just from experience. Let's get that spark plug in there. I'm going to try and start this motor with a tickle of gas. Trust you're still. I had my safety glasses on from. Okay, I'm gonna give this a try before the battery dies on the car. Make sure everything's out of the way. Okay, I call that a success. I'm not going to do more of that. I actually wrecked an engine once doing this too much. I think it got something into the cylinder or up into the carb without the air filter. So I don't do as much of this as I used to. It's a lot of fun, but uh, it's not really good to do. All right, so now do we get it running or do we run it through the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, ultrasonic cleaner? I gotta decide, thanks. So just remember, you saw it first on Bruce Bender TV. The rest is carb clean and uh, motor check. And having a little bit of a hoard, eh? Just a little bit, makes a difference. So this is just Tecumseh and one Kohler a coil. They're so similar, I think this is, yeah, this is the Kohler, they're pretty similar. Don't let that fool you, they probably won't work. All right, now we're just going to see if we've got a spark. We can see through the spark indicator from the coil to the spark indicator and to the plug. Hope it doesn't fire again, but it might. Beautiful, huh? Crunch. That's why you break cameras when you got a YouTube channel for small engines. Okay, now I'm going to take this carburetor off of here.
Beauty. Ooh, there's a little crud in. Good. Okay, let's just take take the linkages off. I'm gonna put a scratch on where that linkage came off, right there. See that? No, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's right. That just means the last guy put it on there. Okay, now I'm gonna get and I'm gonna do a quick inspection of this carburetor. Half inch wrench. Oh, that's old gas coming. It looks green. Those can be tough to get. Out. Washer looks good. Pretty fuzzy, yeah. Not a surprise. This might be a candidate for the ultrasonic cleaner. But all the gaskets are pretty new. You guys know me, I don't use my ultrasonic cleaner enough, eh? Sometimes it's just a 15 minute job to get things back on track. And that's what I'm gonna try right now, because I'm curious. Although this, oh, looks good. All right, I'm gonna put some gloves on, wash my hands again and put some gloves on. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna clean this carburetor a little bit. Okay, I was given this brush by a subscriber. It's really hard wires, eh? And this bowl, I just, this bowl is now clean. I just ran it through here. I'll spray it out. So, I know I have the ultrasonic cleaner, you guys, but I actually like cleaning carburetors. So that's clean. The bowl is, the bolt is clean. Cleaner than my hands. The carburetor is clean, except I have to do a couple of squirts into the jets here. And down here. Yeah, that sounded like it opened something up. Good. This I cleaned in gas, and the needle, they don't really wear out, and the pin. So now I'm going to just uh, dump this out into this really dirty, dirty, dirty container. We'll wipe out our tray, and it will become our assembly tray. I'm kind of pumped on this little motor because I got plans for it, which you'll see later if we get everything going around and around and up and down. Okay, let's get rid of some of these rags. Okay, I haven't shot through the end of this yet. The end of the emulsion tube. Remembering this is an older mower, right? Piece of wire down there. Maybe. Maybe, baby. Yep. Good. To a small engine guy, that's a good sound. Okay, I'm going to pour just a little bit of clean gas into this. 
to do a rinse a to get the carburetor spray off the rubber parts. Good. That's brand new gas. I think we should put this back together. Oh, and I cleaned up the, the float too. So float. Well, let's get rid of this gas. Okay. Float needle. And they say the little point of the wire should point to the fresh air. The fresh air comes in that way. So it should point that way, that should go that way, that should go that way. That should just lower down onto there like that with a needle. And then we're going to blow into it. Good. It looks a little out of alignment to me. It is a bit out of alignment. Not much. So to put the alignment in, I just put a screwdriver in there and pull down, push down on that a little tiny bit. And that should change things for us. We can take a measurement with the uh, carburetor tool. Still a little high. There we go. It's good. The rubber's not even that bad. I think the ignition module died and this thing has just been sitting around for a long, long time. So I like cleaning carburetors, I apologize. Okay, we should find a bar in here with two screws and we're going to stick this on. Pair of pliers. Now I'm just going to wipe things down a little bit. Was I standing in front of you there? So there's the final linkage. The top, the top lever goes to the mark on the carb that you scratched, and the bottom one goes over to this. This is a governed machine, which is kind of cool. Okay, I'm going to put the top cover on now. There sure isn't much to these guys, eh? Compared to uh, some of the bigger machines. Good. And we also have this piece of plastic that I want to get cleaned up. So I'm going to just clean this up outside and I'll be right back. It's just got goo on it. So now I'm just putting the sh all of the attachments back together again. The covers and the And there's a PCV vent. Oh, that one's going around and around. Oh boy. The PCV vent should fit on there like that. Good. Now the gas tank, which we rinsed earlier, can go on with this clip.
Oh, shoot, I gotta put the bolts on the shroud. Whew. Alrighty. Five sixteenths. And three eighths. I'm kind of excited to see if this little guy is going to run. This is metal metal. I don't mind using the electric impact. It's it's just me. Good. Tank's hooked up. We just pop the tank back on. And the only parts we should have left over is the cover for the air cleaner and the air cleaner. I think we should put a little bit of fuel in it. We have not checked the oil yet. Or changed the oil. Half a tank of gas should be what they're calibrated for. Good. I think it's going to start. I'm going to leave it on the stand. I shouldn't do that, but I'm going to. Okay, one more little test run. It ran a little, it runs a little better when the uh, input is restricted. I don't know what was choking it off. <laughs> so I do have one confession. There is a, there is a tiny little gasket in here missing. Maybe that's what was choking it off. I'll probably find it when I'm sweeping up. Okay, my friends. I misplaced the little seal that goes between here and here, right? It's that seal right there. And it was bugging me. And I swept this garage right into the corners man like down in there down underneath the big toolbox little toolbox under the stairs blew everything out into the alley checked the dirt in the garbage can that's even clean and I thought that sucker has to be somewhere and look at that I am not kidding you I just took the two bolts off the intake manifold and remember it was running a little choky and then I fiddled around with the cover here and then it started running pretty good and bingo so let's get that out of there <laughs> it almost got sucked into the intake valve wow
I don't think it's any good anymore because it got hot. It goes right in here, right like that. Oh, sorry. So, hey, all right. So it went into here, it's supposed to go into here like this. I might even have one in my Tecumseh carburetor stuff. If not, it still seals really good around here, right? Well, I'm glad I found that. That was driving me crazy, man. I, I was laying in bed last night, two in the morning, thinking, where is that little rubber seal? So now I'm gonna put it all back together again. I'm, I'm first I'm gonna look for, for that, for a replacement. I should have one of those laying around. Okay, this is my, whoops. This is my Tecumseh hoard. There's gotta be one in here. So this, this is the beer, beer that I, I enjoy at the, after the end of a long week, and that's called Kokney, not Cocaine. For you guys out there that were joking about that. Okay, so I'm just gonna dump this in here. Oh! Okay, this might not be the right size. But then again, it might be. Not quite. <laughs> so I'm going to dig around and see if I can find it. Okay, let's see if there's one in here. No, it's the same round. Same round one as here. So I don't think that's going to work. Although, gosh, I think it will stay there. Do you think we could use that? I think we could, you know. I'm going to try it. So now, we are going to install this with this and this back onto that machine. But we got to hook up the carburetor. That was amazing! Oh, I'm gonna just, now that I got things looking good, I'm just going to give them a wire brush. And, uh, Because I got the got this opened up. So I'm just gonna put the carburetor back on and uh, we're gonna see how it runs. You guys don't need to watch me fiddle with that. Okay, I'm just reattaching the carburetor without that rubber hose in the hole there, right? And I'm tightening up those two bolts right there. Just a minute. So I'm tightening up those two bolts right there. Isn't that something? That's the second time I've seen a piece of plastic get sucked through to the intake valve on these Tecumseh's, eh? The, uh, the, second the first time I saw it, it was actually this one of these red tubes that got sucked all the way through. Yeah, we're good. I like to just wiggle these in before I tighten them up. Now I'm going to just try something. Once again, thank you, sir. Can you believe that got sucked right through that carburetor? Because there is a there is a, a tube right through, right? Got about an eighth of a turn there. 
Okay, now we want to make sure this doesn't get sucked through again. Maybe that's what the wrong. Look at the teeth are holding it. You got her. She's gonna be all right. Yeah, that's the problem right there. Did you see it fall out? That's it. That's how it gets bumped. I'm not sure if I should use it. I'm not going to use it. It still seals. More risk than reward there. That'll hold. Have we got anything left? Yeah, we have a box full of carburetors that I'm going to stick away. I'm going to do that right now and we'll come back and start the, start the machine up. So, I don't like starting them on the bench like this, but we're going to just give it a, give it a try and see how, how it runs. Now, there's two kinds of primers, okay? I've been given static online that I pumped, I pumped the primers too fast, but on the Pulsa Prime, Briggs and Stratton, you're actually pumping fuel. So you got to go slow. you got to go one, two, Three, right? But but then on some of the other ones, like the Tecumseh's with the red, with the red, the original reds, and now black because of the stems, they just put a pulse of air. So you got a pulse of air. You might as well just go another pul and pulse of air. And this one is also air. So it should start. perfect. I'm going to get the air cleaner and uh, it's been out drying in the sun and that'll be it. So on part two of this fantastic voyage you're going to see what I've got planned for this little mower. So that is really cool. Can you believe that? This didn't get sucked right into there, eh? <laughs> and then the heat deformed it. Fun.